Madam President. Senator from Arizona. I say I appreciate very much the wise words of the senator from Georgia who has been heavily involved in health care issues uh, dating back to his time in the Georgia legislature and brings a unique perspective uh, to the issue, that of a person who's had to, as a elected representative, who's had to wrestle with these issues at, from not only the federal level but also state. So I appreciate his words. You know, Madam President, as the senator from Georgia pointed out, uh, this is probably uh, the single most important domestic issue that will be taken up by the Congress of the United States at least this year, maybe the next couple of years, and maybe in a long time. When you look at the fact that we are addressing an issue that, are, that basically consumes one-fifth of our gross national product, not to mention the fact that the system is broken, that the inflationary pressures are unsustainable, and uh, there are millions of Americans who do not have access to quality, affordable health care. So where are we now in the United States Senate? I think it's time for a little status report. The Finance Committee, remember that there are two committees who are in parallel tracks taking up this uh, health care legislation, the Finance Committee and the Health, Education, Labor and Pension Committee. The uh, health care, the uh, Finance Committee yesterday announced that they will delay their consideration until after the 4th of July recess. The day before, the Congressional Budget Office came out with a report that was nothing less than stunning. It indicated that the proposal that the Senate Health, Education, Labor and Pension Committee is considering would have a cost of a trillion dollars and only insure approximately one third of the 47 million uninsured, which would lead one to the conclusion, doing the most elementary math, that if we were able to insure all of the uninsured in America, that would be a cost of three trillion dollars. And we still have no proposal as to how we would pay for this dramatic expansion of the role of government in America's health care system. And never before, Madam President, in the years that I have been here, have I seen a, quote, markup, which means we begin the amending process of a bill through the legislature as we teach our children in school, and yet three major policy pages are still completely blank, completely blank. Now, we'll see that we we're told we'll see these new policies at some point tomorrow. That's after we were told we'd see them today. And then the majority, the Democrats, who are coming up with this language themselves without any consultation with this side of the aisle, they'll give us a chance to review it. And those three areas are the are the are the really the most difficult aspects of reforming health care in America. The, the, those policies are, as, as we all know, um, concern the uh, way that we pay for the, uh, the new language on employer mandates, the government plan, and the biological drug regulation. There is a government option that will be part of this legislation, i.e., government takeover eventually, in my view, of the health care system in America, something that a majority of Americans have voiced their deep concern about, employer mandates, and biologic drug regulation. So here we are supposedly moving forward on, and, and the uh, administration spokesperson in the last couple of days said that the bill that is being considered by the health committee is not quote the administration bill what is the administration's bill where is the administration's bill and we have no idea what the provisions that i just mentioned will cost or whether they'll create jobs or not now and and whether the american people will be 
called upon to pay an increase in taxes, and if so, who will pay them? I don't know how you move forward with legislation that, frankly, you don't know how you're going to pay for. So how can the president and the majority expect the American people to take them seriously when they talk of wanting a bipartisan product that addresses their needs when at the same time majority members and their staff have written the entire bill without any input from this side of the aisle? I assure you the American people would have much more confidence in this effort if both Republicans and Democrats were working together on health care reform. Instead of changing Washington, it sounds an awful lot like a one-sided effort to jam a bill through before the American people understand what's in it. Now, just this morning, there's some very interesting data. According to a CBS New York Times survey, the president holds a 57 percent approval rating, which is very good. On health care, his approval rating is 44 percent. That is way down. And it's down because the American people are beginning to figure out that we're going to have a proposal that will end in government control of Americans' health care, and it will squeeze out competition, and it will be incredibly expensive. As I mentioned, the CBO preliminary estimate is one trillion that ensures only one-third of the American people. And it leaves 32 million people without health insurance. So we hear that the Finance Committee, as I mentioned, is in such disarray over the costs and policies in their bill, they postponed their consideration until after the Fourth of July break. They obviously don't have their policies together enough to move forward. It appears to me from service on the Health Committee that it does not either. I think the only reasonable thing to do is to go back to the drawing board, let's go back to the beginning, let's sit down together and work out a reasonable proposal that we can go to the American people that says that we will provide them with affordable and available health care. Every American knows that costs are out of control. Everybody knows that needs to be reformed, but we will do so without a government takeover of America's health care system. Madam President, I yield the floor.